Okay, guys, um, I think we've got plenty of stuff to talk about today. So I want to get straight to my, my guests. Um, so I, uh, I'm going to go over to my first guest here today. And I think we have John Howard in um, the Rhea Power Hour. So I'm going to welcome um, John to the Rhea Power Hour. Um, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks so much. I am upright, so it's a good day for me. Um, if you wouldn't mind, um, start off by just maybe giving me a little bit of background. Uh, tell me who you are and where you're calling from. Uh, calling from Massachusetts, and uh, my partner had, uh, last January, had a bleed. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been feeding him through the tube and had some nursing. Uh, but he's come a long way. We started uh, oral feeding. And hopefully, uh, in the not too distant future, we'll be taking the tube out and he'll be able to exclusively eat uh, orally. Uh, the the what, one of the big things is I I want to get him out of bed as often as possible, and uh, the thing of it is with the with the walker, we need two people, one with the gate belt standing behind him, and, and me in front, and we go out to the uh, out to the living room. Blaine's a professional musician. He taught for years down at Brown University, and uh, he's still uh, he's picked up the flute and has played some. Uh, notes and everything. He's very aware and cognitive of things. Uh, his verbal skills are, are, are cognitively, they're, in, they're improving. Uh, the thing of it is, is uh, getting his legs, getting physical therapy for his legs, where he will be able to walk by himself with a walker. Uh, he's mm -hmm. incontinent, so uh, we do all of the uh, maintenance in bed. But uh, sure. he... Uh, when he needs to go, obviously he throws his legs over the bed and it feels like he can go to the bathroom, but he can't. So that that's one of our goals at this point sure. is being able to- Hey John, to one, be, yeah, John, one thing really quickly, um, would you mind just tilting the camera down? I'm just getting a beautiful picture of, of the top of your, the top well, of your room. A, just, a, I can't. Around you, there's a, a plus and a minus. If I hit the plus, will huh. that enlarge the picture? Um, uh, potentially, it might also, um, depends on which type of device you're calling on, it might actually do something different. Um, so it depends on, uh, exactly what type of device that, is you're that on. better? Is that better? Much better, John. Very good. There, I can, okay. I can see you perfectly there. Yeah. Excellent. So thanks for that. Okay. So, um, so he's making good progress, but he's still, um, um, you know, you guys still have some big goals on the horizon there. Yeah. Well, the um, walking, sounds... you know, the walking, I, I, when we have the walker, it's almost, he puts so much strength in his arms on the walker that he's it doesn't look like he's utilizing his legs enough uh, sure, to walk, sure. but he's using his arms. So uh, to, to try to strengthen the legs and get the, he, he, was, uh, he was quite the athlete. He was a championship uh, skier. Uh, he was a, uh, in, in the equestrian world, he won, you know, he won a lot of events and everything. So very mm -hmm. athletic. But at sure. this point, well, also a, mu a musician, though, right? You said he was a flautist. And a That's musician, really incredible. absolutely. Yeah, a musician, yeah. yeah, a musician down in uh, at Brown for many years, and then uh, okay, you know, giving lessons at home and things like that. So, sure. Uh, sure. So with this bleed, I understand neurologically that uh, those those cells are damaged for good. But I'm seeing, as the neurologists say, uh, other parts of the brain are taking over. And he's relearning things. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, the, so, I'm the occupational therapy therapist among other many hats. And I started out with a deck of cards and he would stare at them blankly. At this point, he can name the, uh, you know, name a dozen cards in a row. Okay. So I attribute okay. that to some kind of transference of uh, the cells being able to take over what was damaged. Yeah, I think John, you, you you've identified a couple of things too. I think um, your your friend and, and by the way, what is your friend's name? Blaine Corey. Blaine. Okay. Yeah. Blaine, so say hello, it, say hello to Doctor Blaine. Can you say hello? I'm Blaine. <laughs> hey Blaine, how are you? Um, thanks so much. He's for sitting being in here. his room, and, I, and sure. this cord is. Uh, I don't know if you can. That's quite all. Okay, that's, that's quite all right, right, John. You, yeah, you, that's yeah, right. You just yeah. be you be where you're comfortable. That's fine. Um, okay. I think, you know, you, you gave some really nice background there. I think you guys are on a great path and I'm, I'm so glad that, um, that Blaine has you there as an advocate. For him. I think not, not everyone is as fortunate as Blaine is to have such a good, um, a good advocate. 
So I'm really glad that you're there and you're reaching out for, um, for information um, to kind of see in the future, what can we do to help accelerate Blend's recovery? Um, I think honestly, um, you are drawing the correct inferences insofar as you're seeing improvements. And um, because of those, um, the, the damage that happens following a neurologic injury, um, you're very much um, right in with regard to how um, the, the brain needs to change. Um, in most parts of the adult brain, human specifically, there are some cases and some really cool animals that can do some large, what's called neurogenesis, um, most notably um, birds that, that sing. Um, but in the case of humans, um, most of the brain, there isn't a whole lot of neurogenesis. There's a couple of places in um, the ventricular zones and a couple areas in the hippocampus that can actually grow new neurons. But most of the improvements that we see following neurologic injury are due to functional reorganization. Um, and that is basically the neurons that are there and their connections start to generate new circuits. Right. And this is one thing I should mention. Maybe I haven't dwelled on this enough, everyone. And that is that it's not simply the physical wires that are sort of connecting to each other. These are the axons in our brains and the dendrites. It's not simply their connections that matter. It's how they functionally talk to each other. Right. When one neuron fires, what happens to the downstream neurons? So that's what I call functional connectivity. And much of what happens following neurologic injury is that functional connectivity or, or kind of functional ohm, if you will begins to reorganize. And so these new functions can result in improved behavior, whether that's speech, being able to say more words, being able to, to coordinate the, the oral, um, the, the, voice, the voice, and also the, um, the sort of um, um, vocalizations, as well as our motor functions of our hands and our feet. So I think you're right on the money there, John, when it comes to understanding that the brain is changing um, and it's changing its function. The, the, excuse, so me, doctor, think, yeah. excuse me, doctor, sure. there's one. Uh, he is, uh, and I'm sure it's very common with this particular uh, syndrome, is he'll go on chanting, mm. help, 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 okay? And it's several reasons. He'll, he'll, if he's sleeping and he has a dream, he still thinks he's in a dream and he'll start saying help. Sometimes if he has to have a bowel movement or something, he'll say help. If he feels wet and uncomfortable, he'll say help. But the yep. chanting goes on uh, continuously. Is there a way of uh, circumventing that kind of chanting, or is that is it common? Yeah. So I'd say this is a good a good question. And actually, John, you're the first person to ask me about this concept of perseverating or alterations in sort of what's called emotional liability. And um, yeah, this is quite common to have changes, right? Um, you know, uh, very much all of what human experience is, is generated in the brain. And that is the emotional states and our, um, the way we perceive things and the way we dwell on things is also um, um, generated there. And so it can be a combination of things. I think these are, this is quite common to have um, changes in these sort of perseverations. And in terms of why someone may choose this word um, to help you know, it might be the perception of perseveration, but it really could be, that's the word that gets easily generated. And that's the mechanism by which um, um, Blaine is using to communicate. And so it's just, it's a, it's a function of may not be able to map different types of words yet onto different sorts of needs. And so it's just sort of um, reverting back to something that works that he knows he can actually communicate. If help is the word, then he's able to then use that to communicate oh. to you that something needs to happen. And so oh. I think I think it's quite common. Thank you, um, Angel, for that. You know, I tell yeah. you, we uh, we had a wonderful dentist, a mobile dentist, a dental hygienist that came and really mm. saved his oral health. She was remarkable, sure. and uh, so she gave me a, a strategy every day for cleaning his teeth, especially after he's eating mm. orally and things like that. So this morning I had one of the aides, you know, hold his lips over and go through with the little uh, flossing sure. brush and do sure. and while we were doing it he was going help help as it blame mm -hmm. please stop talking you're talking too much and he looked mm -hmm. and, and then he says you talk too much too <laughs> he has a great i mean it, this but, but yeah is, that's you know, that's really good like, though but we're getting more and more expressions of the old blame like that yep yep 
Yeah, and I think, um, of course, wherever the stroke has its impairments, right? You can have direct impairments at certain places, um, but the way because um, the brain and the nervous system is so interconnected that when you have subtle changes in in places, um, you can have what are called sort of carryover effects distributed across the network, and so that's why you can get these sort of changes that are distributed um, outside of where you normally have the damage. Um, and so, but it's really good though, that these, um, the humor and, um, the little quips, as you said, are, are starting to, to, to resolve, uh, and starting to come back, um, which, which is really encouraging getting that sort of positive return. Uh, so I say on the whole, that's really, really quite, quite good.